fuck this day of survival. Project Zomboid's opening statement is, this is how you die. Putting emphasis on survival is key, and the base building of Project Zomboid is no joke. Base building of Project Zomboid is quite an interesting topic, and it is one that is often undecided in my own head. Did I mention I often find myself struggling whether or not I want to sit down roots or if I just want to play as a nomadic person? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary exactly to to set down roots and, and build a base, but I think it's very helpful if you're planning on playing the long game. If you're just going to play to explore and and loot buildings, you, you probably don't need a base. Maybe a, maybe a vehicle um, as your base, but I don't think you need that unless you're planning to play the long game. Base building, as you just mentioned, doesn't have really a need to play the game. But it has so many beautiful advantages to it, and even disadvantages. There have been quite a few times I've built in Project Zomboid, thought I was completely secure, just to find out that I secretly led an entire horde back to my base with my car, and I didn't even realize it. And that is, that's one of the things I struggled with, was uh, materials, storage, and experience you need a lot of carpentry skill to build like the basics for a base now that you can build storage you can build rain catchers and things like that um, at a pretty low level carpentry but if you want to build like spikes or fences or even walls for that matter i think you need like level five carpentry just to do those basic things of adding on um i had to just take a a house and just kind of build those those fewer smaller items around my house as my base and not even actually start building my own base. It's such an interesting facet that even if you have all the materials and you have the tools and all that kind of stuff, like you said, you still need the skills to do it. Did you find yourself having trouble leveling up the skills? Yeah. So I didn't really have a problem finding skill, uh, getting the skill leveled up. So I didn't find the books exactly, but I took apart every possible thing I could take apart with the tools I had. I found those tools and every house I looted, I looked for beds. I took, I took apart so many beds. It's ridiculous, but that also gives you materials, nails, planks, and scrap wood, but it also gives you that at carpentry experience. It doesn't level it up as fast as, as say reading a book would, but when the books aren't available to you, just take apart stuff, rip it apart, whatever you can find to take apart, take it apart. That's all experience. Now, there is a rumor, and I thought you might find this interesting, uh, that taking apart beds one day uh, can yield uh, little stashes of, like, rifles or guns and ammo and stuff like that um, that I've read about. Interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't experience any of that. Um, like I said, I got nails and scrap wood and things like that from an experience, obviously, um, but I never got anything extra out of it, I guess. Um, but like I said... You some of the things that you can take apart, you have to have very specific tools to. So I had a hammer and a screwdriver. I was able to take apart electronics and beds, basically, and that was about it. Uh, so I didn't get to really explore everything else. The game intends for you to eventually die to a situation. One of the things that I find enjoyable about the game is the kind of base building it allows you to take over houses. So even if you are a nomad, you can move shelves around or other things to blockade maybe windows and doorways so you can have like a safe place to sleep that night or whatever. So it's it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm playing this game and I'm playing a lot of it to kind of in preparation. And I haven't played a lot of vanilla and I haven't played a lot of solo. But one of the things as I'm playing that I'm I'm thinking is I keep finding all this interesting stuff in the world that I would like to take back to my base and use, but I can't figure out how to move them. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you can do this. But I kept thinking it was modded that let you move these items, the bookshelves, barbecue pits, the storage bins. I found out today, <laughs> not even from you, I found out earlier today <laughs> that I was just not pushing the right button or clicking the right menu to move stuff. And But that's a oh, yeah. little option to be able to barricade walls and, and barricade doors with items. It, I. I was trying to build everything, and I didn't realize you could move it all. <laughs> you gotta love that, though. And folks, if you don't know what he's talking about, or you're new to Project Zomboid, in the upper left-hand corner, it looks like a storage crate kind of uh, furniture. 
you just hover over that and then it'll bring out a little pop out uh, menu where it can show you the different directions you could do pick up, place, rotate, stuff like that. And that's how you do it. But be warned, whatever you do pick up may require some skill or be extremely heavy. So try to think about that kind of stuff when you're moving around and it must be empty. But yeah, you might need tools so too. Oh, yeah. I think you need like a hammer and uh, a saw to be able to move some of the larger furniture. I think so. But I believe some of the things that incorporate metal, I think you have to have some metalworking tools as well if you want to move those. Don't quote me on like that, but I think so. Oh, oh. But let's, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and just talk about have you experienced vanilla base building? Not just moving furniture around, but actually have you tried to build a base yet? The farthest I got building wise was barricading windows, barricading doors, um, and I built a, a rain collector. Now, the reason why I only got that far is for one, what the first hard option is materials. Materials uh, are hard; they're not hard to find, but you need a lot of them to build a base. You know, they're not it's everywhere. Like, you know, exactly. It's one plank and a couple of nails, I think, to barricade the windows. But like for mm -hmm. a um, for a rain collector, for example, I think it's like four planks, a few nails, and I think four garbage bags for one rain collector. That's a good use of uh, garbage bags. Very clever on the desk. Now, I know for a fact, folks, that you can barricade the inside and the outside of windows. So you can actually make them pretty tough. And if you don't do the last stage of the barricade, you can still see out of them. But the final stage blocks all light and not that kind of stuff in case you want to, you know, have uh, tougher drapes. But be warned, if I'm not mistaken, if you barricade the outside of your windows, you can't unbarricade your windows from the inside. You have to go outside to remove those boards. Why did you not go further in your base building? Why, why, why did you only stop at rain collectors and barricading your windows? Uh, you need a lot of carpentry skill to do some of the, not even really the more, what I would consider more advanced um, buildings. You just need more carpentry skill to build basic walls and my first concern was to build like fences and spikes around my the house i was building in you need like carpentry oh, yeah. five just for that and wow. i was playing an actual carpenter and still started off with like carpentry two or three um so i was looking for books i was tearing apart any piece of furniture i could possibly find that i could tear apart that i had the tools for and just soaking up as much carpentry experience as I could. I was hauling back um, as many planks and nails as I possibly could in my inventory at, at all times. Uh, another tip, uh, I think a vehicle is very important if you're solo trying to build a base, because you can carry a lot more materials in a vehicle back to your base that you're building in a vehicle than you can just say in your backpack or a duffel bag, or even in, in your pockets for that matter, when you don't have a backpack or duffel bag. Yeah, that's one of the more interesting aspects of base building is that it's definitely not something you're going to probably do within the first half hour of surviving. <laughs> well, funny story. I chose like the first building uh, that I could that had an upstairs and a downstairs when I was playing my carpenter character. You said it. Hey, you said you can't build a base within like 30 minutes of, of surviving. I lost probably 10 characters in my first 30 minutes of playing before I finally had a character that survived long enough for me to start building a base. And to be honest, like I said, I just picked the first somewhat nice house that didn't have broken windows, that didn't have broken doors, um, and that had an upstairs bedroom and a downstairs area that was a kitchen and a living room. Yeah, that's really cool. Because there's so many ways to base build in uh, Project Zomboy Vanilla, and that's whether it's taking over a, um, a building, a house, a warehouse, so many things. Base building isn't really restricted to, like, other games where there's only a certain area you can build in. Pretty much the entire map allows you to build, and that's one of the better things about it. But what do you think the pros and cons about building in Project Zomboid is, base building-wise? I think the pros, like I said earlier, is long game. It's, I think you're able to survive longer that way with that amount of security because you can, like you said, you can be a nomad and you can jump from house to house and, and survive that way relatively easily, but you don't have a base of operations. If you get stuck way out in the distance somewhere, you just have to hope there's a bed in the next house you go to. 
if you're tired, if you're exhausted. I almost lost my carpenter character that way. I went out a little too far away from my known area and away from my base, and I couldn't find a place to sleep. And then I got a horde chasing me. So I was, I'm running down the street with no stamina left. I can't sprint anymore. I'm over encumbered. My guy's sweating. My guy's hungry. He's thirsty. And, and I had to drop my backpack full of supplies. I just stopped tossing, start tossing stuff out of my pockets onto the road just so that I could move fast enough to stay in front of the horde just to get back to my base. And then I had to go back and get all of that again. Um, I think that kind of is a pro and a con of base building and not base building because I was trying to get back to my base, but I knew I had a safe place. Go on, give me a con. It can't be all good pros. <laughs> well, the cons is the experience, if you ask me. The time the time and the skill it takes to build a base. Because like I said, I've, to me, you know, to some Zomboid players, 10 days alive may not be a lot. For me, that's my longest surviving character. And I got one rain catcher built and I got uh, like four windows barricaded and one door barricaded in that amount of time because I've been just soaking up experience and trying mm -hmm. to gather materials. I recently found a vehicle so that I could start transporting some of my materials to the base, but like all of that stuff weighs so much and weighs you down so much. And once you're encumbered to a certain point, you start to take damage as you're trying to walk to different places. And yeah. not only that, but even if you're not to the point where you're taking damage, you're slowing. The more you're carrying, the more over encumbered you get before the damage starts, you're moving slower and you're an easier target for the zombies. You are correct on that. I'm going to start with my um, um, uh, cons I think of base building are right away, which is your base is essentially a target, too. Um, if your base, somehow you accidentally lead some of the zombies back to your base, and they overrun your base, until you actually have the armaments and everything else to take that base back, which, by the way, you may not because they're inside the base, that base may be abandoned. Now, good news is, is Project Zomboid has long-term persistence, and you can eventually go back there and take your base back, but you may have to start all over again. And I wouldn't say that's a necessarily a con as much as it is a cool mechanic, but it can be a con of base building inside of Project Zomboid, because you're putting all of your eggs in one basket. Whereas a Nomad, you're really picky about what you choose. You become very attached to certain items and repair the items a lot. Um, other cons I would say is that I think vanilla base building uh, definitely needs a little bit more love, which I'm hoping to see in Build 42 with some of the expanded skills and some other really cool things. Um, some of the things I would like to see is more traps, more kind of things that we can create, like Dimension was talking about with the spike traps and some of the other stuff. I would love to see more ways for me to actually make my base more defensible using some of the upcoming skills in Build 42. Uh, pros? I get to put, I'll put, uh, have a place where I can store all my junk. I mean, valuable <laughs> stuff. You know, fill no, uh, nothing with uh, beans and uh, Canadian bacon and all that kind of good stuff. But also, other pros are I actually become attached to Project Zomboid World. I start playing that game more and more because I feel like I'm not constantly running around and I have no place to really call home. Um, it's the same reason why I like base building in a lot of games is that base building really attaches you as a player to the per world persistence that you have become part of. And because you can start multiple characters in the same world, even if you die in solo, it allows you to essentially die and then take it another character there and be all like, oh, look, I stumbled on a home that I never knew about. Ha ha, just joking, go in and set up a base again. But it, those kind of cool things are needed and necessary for base building to be good. But... What about Project Zomboid? Would you like to see quality of life or would you like to see mod modded content be put into the game? I have already said that one of my biggest difficulties, and I, I deal with this in just about every survival game that I play, is over encumbrance. One of the things that I would I don't think I would like to see it in vanilla because I think it I think it makes sense, but I think one of the things that makes building easier in a mod that I, I've actually seen that I would like to use at some point is like uh, half wood weight and half steel weight. Um, materials mm. that you use for building cost less weight for you, so you can carry more. Because um, that was a big struggle for me, like I said, is is the materials. And I had to get a vehicle just to get start getting something going. Um, yeah. 
anything that helps with carry weight, um, anything that really, like you said, adds any kind of structures, um, adds any kind of crafting, adds anything to your base uh, that just allows more customization or anything like that, I think are good options for mods or to be added um, into the game in vanilla later. I know with build 42, they're adding, uh, they're adding more walls types, uh, stone, uh, brick, um, plaster, oh, I yeah. think is one Looks of the nice. other ones. Um, there's a whole new crafting set that's going to be put in, um, including smelting yeah. and pottery and things like that. I believe, um, a lot more craftable items, uh, just there's, mm -hmm. there's, so, there's so much coming in build 42 that both, I think fit. Oh the wait, Nomad there's more. Place <laughs> exactly i think they both fit the nomad play style but they also fit the base building play style and i well that's one of the things that they want to concentrate on is the long game is making it to yeah. where once you're um kind of set up and you have a base and you have the food and the water and stuff to survive that there's more to do there's more to build there's more options of uh, things you can discover and build. Um, there's more lore in the world that you can go check out as well. It's really interesting. Build 42 is just around the corner because we're going to be seeing things like you said, smelting and pottery and masonry walls and all that stuff. But we're also going to be seeing things like animal husbandry and so many other cool ways to really attach you to the land as well, other than just farming. And I cannot wait to see what else comes into a base building inside of Project Zomboid. Once you have animal husbandry and you have a place where you can bring your animals, if you're, you know, if you're wanting to keep different animals, you're going to have to build those defenses and build that base to protect those animals. Because you can't tell me, at, you, you can't convince me that the zombies aren't going to hear a cow mooing, a dog barking, you know, all of these different animal sounds and not be attracted to your area because you have that going on. And if you're going to be able to raise animals and keep animals and use them for to sustain you um in whatever manner it is you're gonna have those noises pulling zombies to your base to our amazing community what are you most excited for in build 42 folks thank you very much for coming here and watching me and our friend dimension 119 talk about base building in project zomboid his experiences with it as well as my personal opinions on it and i hope that you guys got some good information are excited for build 42 and what a hold for base building in project zomboid don't forget to follow uh our channel and remember folks this podcast would not be possible without my good friend I mentioned here, which his Twitch is just down below, as well as his YouTube and our amazing producer, Red Falcon. Thank you very much for watching this episode and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.